In this video, we'll be talking about importing tree points and other operational layers like street lights. Trees are important to make your city model resemble reality as closely as possible. A great place to find tree data is your local city's database. Let's take New York City's Open Data Portal as a starting point. Here I can simply search for trees and find, in this case, a tree census database. If I click on the icon to the right of the tree census inventory, I can get a visual of what the data set actually looks like. And then I have an option up here on the right as well to export the data set either as a KML, a shapefile, KMZ, or even as a CSV file. If you can't locate tree data sets, you'll have to author your own trees. This can be done using a simple template in ArcMap. Here's an example of the editing template authored by the 3D Cities team. The template lets you digitize trees with heights and crown width from aerial imagery. To download the latest version of the template and read more about how to use it, come here to GitHub. Download the zip file and you'll get the 3D asset editing template and a workflow for editing trees. The City of Redlands has a good tree database for all the trees on public land. So in City Engine, Let's drag in the Redlands Geodatabase from the data folder in the City Engine Essential Skills project folder. Uncheck Select Deselect All and put a check mark next to Tree. You'll see there's about 7,000 trees in Redlands on public land. Click on Next and then Finish. These tree points should come in at sea level so we'll be below the terrain. So right click the tree layer in the scene window and choose align shapes to terrain. In the dialog box, under the align function, choose any of the options and set the height map to terrain DEM and then click finish. Now let's assign some symbols to these points using one of the new rules in City Engine. This rule is in the esri.lib folder and this library of rules ships with the City Engine installer. To assign the rule, right click the tree layer and choose Assign Rule File. And then navigate to the esri.lib folder and down to the Rule folder. Expand the Plants folder and here choose Plant Loader 3D CIM and click Open. Once you generate the models, you'll get a bunch of what look like ghost trees. This indicates that the attributes in this tree feature class don't match the attributes in the Rules database. And to change that, we can edit the attributes of the trees prior to importing them into City Engine. This rule is looking directly at the name category in the 3D CIM database and assigning the correct model. So you can see how much of the database doesn't match. The way to fix this is to either match the name category in your database to a name in the rule database, or we can change some parameters so the rule draws the symbols based on a symbol name. To do this, press the backspace key in the name field in the 3D CIM group in the inspector window and hit generate. And you'll see all of the trees will get the representation from the symbol name category. This particular tree dataset doesn't have height data, but the beauty of this rule is it's assigning height values based on tree species. Within the rule, you do have the option of linking to a height or crown width, which would be the radius of the tree, to an attribute in your data set. To view our entire tree database, I recommend going to the Plant Identification by Height web scene. It's called the Vegetation Library with Lumen RT 3D Plants. When you take a look at the web scene, you can see the full extent of the database and see all the species arranged according to height. The names that you see here will only match to a city's tree database 5 to 10% of the time. Therefore, it's important to start thinking about how to replace the true species in the database with a corresponding symbol. For example, if you have a live oak in your database, we might not have a live oak in this database yet, but you could pick the next best option. Maybe it would be the northern red oak or maybe the white oak model. To add that in the Redlands database, we added a field called symbol name and filled it in with the corresponding common name or the Latin name from the Lumen RT library. You'll see in the data folder of the City Engine Essential Skills project 
we have a plant CSV file. And this is where we align the plant name to a symbol name in the database. In this rule, we have some other options available for how we represent the models. Under options is a parameter called representation. You can see that it's set to model, which is a high resolution realistic look. And this is good for exporting to a GIS database to maybe do some view shed or shadow analysis. To see what the other options look like, make a selection of a group of trees and change the option in the representation drop down menu to fan. This is a lower level of detail with a lot fewer polygons. Again, change the representation to analytical. This shows 3D volumes which automatically adapt to the different tree types to give the correct shape and the 3D volumetric form of the typical species. Change the representation type back to model and let's look at some of the other parameters we have here. There's a random height where you can choose a mature only or a mix of mature and young. Under name we have the species list drop down. So you can play around with selecting different species and see the models update in the viewport immediately. Sometimes you might need to create a visual that makes one feature really stand out. We'll do that now for the tree layer. I'll press Ctrl Z a couple of times to remove the latest species change we made with the model. Next, select all the objects in the tree layer by right-clicking and choosing Select All Objects in the Same Layer. In the Inspector window, set Transparency to about 0.25 and set the Override Color to a green. To get back to the original colours, you can press Ctrl Z or from the Edit drop down menu, select Undo. Because these are a public data set, we don't necessarily have all the trees in people's backyard, but you can manually author these trees by simply selecting one of the trees in the viewport and copying using Ctrl C and then pasting using Ctrl V. After pasting the tree in the scene, you'll notice that you have a new layer in the scene window. It's called Tree Paste. We can rename it over here in the layer window in the inspector. So let's call this Tree Authored and press Enter. Now right click the new layer and choose to select all in the same layer. And then grab the Move tool from the toolbar menu. And now that the tree is selected, you'll be able to actually move this tree to a new location. Once you're happy with the position of the tree, you can play around with the different options in the tree species. And here I'll settle on American Sycamore and click Generate to see the results. Other datasets commonly found in a GIS database are street lamps, furniture and other operational data. If you have this information, go ahead and import it into your scene. For this example, we're going to show you how to bring in street lamps using a CGA rule. So I've zoomed over here to the mall again, and we have a rule called insert object, which once applied will let you browse for a 3D model. So I'll go ahead and select some of these street trees and we'll change them to street lamps. So first I'll select these trees. Now in the navigator window, navigate down to the rules folder Expand the Rules folder and drag and drop the Insert Object CGA rule onto the selected trees. In the Inspector window, you now have an option here to browse to a model file. 
So select Browse, and in the Assets folder of the City Engine Essential Skills project, navigate to the Streets folder and then to Lamps. And scroll down until you see a file called lightpole360.obj and select Open. You can see in the viewport that the trees have been changed to street lamps. And we have another parameter here to adjust the rotation if we needed to. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at these models. First, select one of the street lamps and then choose frame selection from the toolbar. If you needed to adjust the model's location, you could do this using the Move tool. Getting familiar with ArcMap and how to process data will save you time in the end in City Engine. For example, you can process LiDAR data to get tree and building heights, and you can start to author symbol sets from scratch. Otherwise, in City Engine, you can author trees as we showed you today. If you're curious about how to format data in ArcMap, at the City Engine Resource Center, there are ArcGIS to City Engine workflows to help you get started. At training.esri.com, we also have a course called Modeling a City Using City Engine. To get the full list of training available for City Engine, go to Esri's training site and in the search window, type in City Engine. And here you can see a list of free modules, webinars, and training seminars. If you'd like to find out more about our 3D City Vegetation Library, you can download our City Engine project here. You can download procedural rules to help you create small gardens to entire forests. 